Hey guys, Kim here with Art Classes for Kids. And if it's your first time here, welcome to my YouTube channel, Art Classes for Kids. If you've been here before, welcome back. And we teach all kinds of projects. We do uh, all kinds of drawing lessons and we also have all kinds of little shorts. So if you don't have a lot of time, you can always check out those. Now today we're gonna do a project just in time for Halloween. We have a Jack Skellington box that we made years ago and people always asked us, when are we gonna make Sally? So we decided we're gonna make a clay project art box with Sally. It's going to look a little bit like this. And it's inspired by Sally from The Nightmare Before Christmas. We have a box on sale on our website. And if you have this box, then you'll be able to use everything in it to make this project. If you happen to not have this box, you can order one or you can also use whatever you have at home that's similar to the materials that we're gonna be using. So let's get started by checking out all the materials in the box. So I've got this box, I'm gonna open it up. Woo, pull the label right all the way off. Okay, everything we need pretty much is going to be in this bag. So I'm going to move the box and I'm gonna dump out the bag. And we start out with some written instructions. Now this is mostly for people who get the box and can't even wait to get to a video. They just start making it as soon as they get it. It's got step-by-step -step and images of how it will look when it's done. Or yours might look different, but this is how I'm gonna show you how I made mine. Now, you're going to get one of these foam core bases to put your sculpture on afterwards. And it also has a little description of what you made. You can put your name and you can put the date so that you can figure out what year you made it, if you have it for many years and you want to figure out how old you were when you made it, you'll have that date. We also have the main ingredient, which is Model Magic Clay. This is air dry clay made by Crayola. It comes in different colors. We have the little class packs that are one ounce packs. This is the white. You're gonna get, need one pack of white. You're gonna need one pack of blue, one pack of yellow, and one packet of red. We're also going to need a black Sharpie. And lastly, two of these sandwich picks. They're kind of like toothpicks, but they're a little bigger and a little flatter. If you don't have any of these and you're using your own supplies, you can use a toothpick in place. So we've got all these materials. And there's one thing that's not in the box, but I guarantee you probably have it at home. And that is a pair of scissors to cut open these packages. So grab your supplies and let's get ready to make this. Now, one thing I always tell all of my viewers is that I'm gonna move kind of fast and I want you to go at your own pace. To do that, whenever you need a little more time, you just push that pause button and when you are ready, you push play again and you're right with me for the next part. So let's get started. We're gonna push everything over. The first thing we're gonna do is write our name and date on our label. And we're gonna flip this around and set that aside. We're gonna move our little Sally over here. I don't have her glued down, but you can glue her down if you wanna keep her permanent on this. This way you can take it off and move it wherever you like. Okay, now we are gonna start with the white model magic clay and the scissors. We are going to make the skin color first, and we're gonna be using most of the one ounce of Model Magic White. So we will, I always blot the packaging because sometimes it wants to stick to the inside. Like that. And then we've got our piece. I want you to cut off one piece. What we're gonna use this piece for is when we make eyes and when we make a purple later. So save that, take the rest of this clay, and let's knead it. If you've never kneaded clay, what that is is stretching and squeezing and trying to get any air bubbles out, trying to get the clay smooth, soft, and warm, because then it's easier to work with. 
So I usually don't use it right out of the package. I usually get it all soft and ready to go. So I'm going to take this and make a ball out of it. Then I'm gonna press my ball down and stretch it out a little. Now what I'm going to do next is I wanna make Sally her skin color. Now Sally, if you don't know already, Sally is the girl that Jack Skellington falls in love with. She's like a rag doll that has been stitched together out of all kinds of scraps. And here is an image of her in animation form. And you'll see she's got all the stitching here. She's got red hair, big round white eyes, and red lips. And her clothing has all different fabrics sewn together of yellows and purples. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn her skin to light blue. So to get light blue, we're gonna have to add some blue to white. But blue is the darker color and it's a lot more dominant or more powerful like if you were mixing paint. And so we're not gonna put that much blue. We're just gonna take a few pinches of blue, like maybe that, and then we're going to rip it apart, stack it. I kinda stretch it, rip it, and stack it but you can just stretch it and fold it, whatever method you have of mixing your colors so that you can get a new color and it's going to be a solid color without stripes when we're ready to use it to make our sculpture. Now this sculpture of Sally is what we call a bust. That means it's a sculpture from just the shoulders up, like from here, to the, the shoulders, the neck, and the head. And this is a classical form of sculpture that you would see, oh gosh, way back to the uh, Greek and Roman times, maybe even earlier. Like they would have like a, a, a bust sculpture of Julius Caesar. Or earlier than that, you would see like the Queen Nefertiti. Or uh, later you would see famous uh, maybe presidents and stuff, or famous leaders you would see maybe a bust of John F. Kennedy or Martin Luther King, or they might even have them for all the new presidents. I'm not sure. Anyway, you see how I'm mixing it and I'm getting a light blue. And I only put two little pinches of blue with all that white. So now it's pretty mixed where I don't have any more stripes showing. So I'm gonna roll it in a ball and we're gonna break it into a couple of sections. So I've got a ball and I'm going to flatten it and I'm going to cut it in half. Now, this part is going to be her head and this is going to be the arms and the chest and the hands. So let's make a ball first, because that's easy. Just roll it in your hands. Now, if you want the smoothest ball, what you're gonna do is you're gonna roll it and push as you roll it. To put some pressure, I like to roll it in my hands rather than on the table because my hands have some body heat. They're warm and they're gonna keep it softer. So I've got my ball. I'm gonna set it here so you can see it really good. And now this piece, I'm going to roll it in a ball. And then I'm going to roll it into a log. And I'm going to break this, hmm, I'm gonna break this into four pieces. So first I cut it in half. Then I cut each half in half. So I mark it just by pressing down on my scissors. Now I've got four pieces. So my smallest piece I'm gonna save for into a, a little cone shape. It's underneath the dress. Okay, where you see her neck and chest between it. So we have that. Then we're gonna have these two, roll these each into a carrot shape. So I have two carrot shapes. These are going to be her arms. And we have this last quarter. We're gonna take this last quarter, cut it in half, and save part of it. This is going to be the neck. So it's going to be head, neck, the front of her dress. These are gonna be her arms sticking up to her chin pretty soon. And these are going to be, the little quarter piece left, are going to be hands. I'm gonna roll those into two little balls. 
Now remember, I'm moving fast, so go ahead and, and uh, put it on pause whenever you need to take that moment. And take a look at this. These are the parts so far. We're not sticking anything together yet, but I wanna see if you can get all these parts. We've got the head, neck, two little balls that'll be hands. Those will stick on there. These are going to be the elbows at the bottom and the hands at the top and the chest. So let's give that a little break right now while we get our yellow made. Now the yellow that Sally has is kind of a yellowy orange. So we're going to be using it all in here to build the top part of her dress. And we're gonna add a little bit of red to it. We're going to use all this yellow. And then we're going to take a pinch of red and add it to this. So now I'm just gonna knead all this together. I'll put the red in the middle. While we're kneading this and making a little bit of a orangey yellow, I wanna find out what you know about Sally. Now, many of you know that she was created by the creator of The Nightmare Before Christmas who made all the characters up that are in the movie. He was also the director of the movie. His name is Tim Burton and his style that he used in that movie was kind of a claymation stop action figure style that took a long time to make. That means they pose the characters and snap a photo and then move them slightly, snap the next photo, and keep doing that until they can put all those snapped photos together really quick and then they can make it into an animated movie. Kind of like if you've ever seen claymation like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer or Frosty the Snowman. So now this is getting a little more orange yellow. That's what I was looking for. And anyway, Tim Burton started as an artist. He used to draw and illustrate all kinds of things when he was young. And then he got to work for a motion picture studio doing art and he was really creative. So he made all kinds of things and he really wanted to make this movie for a long time. But it wasn't the style of movie that Disney usually made at the time. And he was working for Disney. So he was going to make it by himself, but they finally came around and he made this movie and it wasn't nearly as popular when he first made it as it is now. And I wonder if any of you have seen it. A lot of people wonder if it's a Halloween movie or a Christmas movie. And I think that's because it's got some Christmas scenes and it's also got some Halloween scenes or it's got a lot of characters you would find at Halloween. Now, what we're going to do is take this ball of yellow orange clay and we're going to press it down until it is like a half of a circle and flat like this. It's like a little round mountain, just like that. Now we're going to put it on our base. So I put that right here and we're gonna build everything around it. So we're going to take this pick and we're going to, we don't need the whole pick, so we're gonna break it in half and we're going to put it inside the top of our little yellow orange mountain. Next, we're going to put the piece that we made to be the neck on top of that. Just like that. It's not a very long neck. And then we're going to put this on the front, which is where her skin shows under her dress. And we're gonna press it all in like that. Now, it's kind of a little big. I'm going to take it off and trim it. So I want it to be a little bit skinnier and shorter. It looks like a little piece of pizza. It's a little piece of blue pizza. So just stick that there and press it on. Okay, so right now it's looking like this. You can even get that to go up to the neck. Now we're going to add the head on. So when we put the head on, you can add the other half of this, like that, and then put the head right on. You can make it go kind of to the back of the ball so it hangs, sticks out a little forward. See the side view? 
that sticks out a little more here than on this side. All righty, so we've got that. Now we're going to work on the face a little bit. So what we're going to do with the face, actually I'm going to take it off of here and lay it down so that we can get a closer view with the overhead camera. What we're going to do to the face is we're going to pinch the clay together to form this nose. Right here, we're gonna pinch it together and make a nose. Then we take the other pick and you're gonna go to the bottom of the nose and push it up, just like this. So now you just push your fingers and push the nose up. And if you wanna put two little nostrils in here, you can do that, just like this. Now on a side view, if you want her nose a little smoother, you can tap it down or lift it out at the tip. And it looks like this. All righty, there we go. She has a pretty skinny neck, so if you want to squeeze it in a little, you can make it skinny. All righty, there we go. Now what we're going to do is take some of our white and we're going to make two little bitty baby balls. We want these two to be the same size. So I'm gonna look at them and go, oh, that one looks a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna get rid of that one or cut, that, cut a little piece off of my bigger ball and put them next to each other and they look about the same size. So I'm gonna put them right in those little eye sockets where I had pressed my fingers into. And then it'll look like this. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to draw on our face. So on our face, we're going to give her a really big smile and it's gonna go all the way across like this. Kind of like Jack Skellington except she's got hair and all kinds of other details. So now we're going to crisscross it with stitches like that. Now, if we want it to st stand out a little more because it's just like a ball, like Jack's head, we can take our pick, go under the mouth and kind of make a chin for it if we want. So we can pull this out. This is a little more advanced. Only do this if you feel like you can do this pretty easily. Now, I think my nose is a little bit high, so I'm going to stretch it down and pinch it a little lower. So you can adjust anything that you are creating here, you can adjust because the clay isn't dry yet. It's not gonna dry for a day. It's going to get drier as we're working, but it's not gonna be completely dry for a day. So I'm going to redo my nose a little and make it a little lower and longer. And I'm going to put my nostrils back in like that. Now what I'll do next is I'm going to draw on the eyes. So do you see Sally's eyes right here? What we're gonna do is we're gonna put a dot in the middle of the white, or it could be a little to the left, but then both eyes gotta be looking left. Or it could be a little to the right, but you gotta be both eyes looking right. So I'm gonna put it a little to the left, and I'm going to do that on both, like that. And then I'm going to draw a black curve on the top white area of the eye. Like that. Okay, now we've got a few more features we're gonna look at. We are going to draw an eyelid fold like higher than the eye, like a rainbow above each eye, like that. Then we're going to go all the way around the eye, or pretty much, let's see, oh, it's pretty much all the way around the eye. And then, we're going to draw some eyebrows. So the eyebrows are going to look a little like stitches. So the stitches go across and above the eyes 
And you can put a little line through it if you want. Just like that. I'm not loving my nose. I'm going to fix my nose a little. I just keep pressing and moving it. It's like you are creating your own nose out of clay. It's like you're the plastic surgeon of this sculptural face. Okay, so we've got that. And now we're, I think we're almost set. So next what we need is we need some lip color. So we're going to grab a pinch of red and roll out a little worm. Now you don't need your worm that long. You're going to measure it and it's going to be about as wide as the nose is. So what I do is I put it underneath on my stitches and then I cut it till it's about as wide as the nose is. And I can press it down in the corners so it looks skinnier in the corners and I can push it up in the middle. And now I have my little lips. Okay, so now she looks like this. When you're ready, we're going to do her arms. So we lay it down. Let's lay it on here for a sec. Okay, we've got these two circles and we've got these two pieces that look like little pyramids or little, actually, little cylinders like a little round tree or something. Now what we're going to do is we are going to put this at the bottom of the yellow on each side and we are going to pinch it together to a point so it looks like an elbow's down there. Then we're going to bring the tips up here to the bottom of her chin. And we're going to add a hand onto that wrist. So we lay this down. And I still want to get this a little thinner in here. Okay, so these are going to be the hands. What I do is I push both down. And what I do is I cut one. Well, that one's a little big. I push down and I cut a little cut. And then I cut some longer cuts, three more. So I have one, two, three, four cuts, and I take the first one and I bend it to the side. So it's like the thumb. And these are like the fingers, and I pull those out. Okay, I'm going to make another hand. So I take this and I cut one cut, two cuts, three cuts, four cuts. I bend one to the side, because it's going to be the thumb, and I pull the rest of them out and make them longer. Okay, so here's a hand, and I pinch it together at the bottom, and I pinch these together at the top so they're not so squared off. And then I'll do that to this one. One, two, three, four. Now, I did that kind of fast. So if you want to pause and rewind and watch it one more time, that's fine. But if you got it and you just need a little more time, go ahead and pause it. The next step after that is to put these little hands on the tips of these arms. So you can just put it like this and then put this back so it kind of sticks out like that. You can bend the fingers if you want. So this one, I'll put this one on the top of this. Whoop. Just like that. And put that back under her chin. You can bend those fingers up if you want. And it starts to look like this. Okay, next what we're going to do is add some fabric colors. We've got the yellow, now we're gonna add some purple. How do you think we get purple? Well, we're gonna take that blue that we have left, that's light blue, and we're gonna take a pinch of red, a couple pinches of red, and we're going to mix those, just like we did the blue and the white, or the yellow with the red, and we're just gonna mix it with our fingers because it's so little. So once I mix it, it starts looking, ooh, this one has, see the red's really dominant. So I think I'm going to have to add some white to it to get it lighter. And I might have to add a little pinch of blue. 
Now I'm gonna mush it and roll it and do whatever I can to get this to mix up really good. Okay, so I'm getting it mixed. It's starting to look more purpley. Okay, it's looking like lavender. Okay, once I get this piece that's almost solid without any stripes in it anymore, and I think I'm looking pretty good, now I'm gonna take this piece, roll it, and smash it. Then I want this to be the biggest piece I can make that's thin. So I'm going to take my Sharpie and roll it. And then peel it off my surface. Now I want some purple maybe over to the right. So I'll put a little, I'll put a little right under her elbow here. So I'm going to cut a triangle shape and squeeze it under here. So I'll put this right about here and stretch it out to fit here and put the arm back. So I have a little purple section and I think I'll do one more purple section over here. Okay, so I've got a little purple, purple, and now, on the shoulders, I'm going to add some sleeves. So this could be one sleeve that's purple. And what I do is I make a half of a circle with what I have left, and I just cut little triangles out of the ends. Now, we're not going to see this, probably, completely because of the fact that we're going to have long red hair on her. So this could be maybe over here on this side. A little sleeve. And on the other side, maybe I'm going to make... Ooh, I used up all my yellow. Well, I can take some yellow off. Just cut some off the back because it's not going to show because her hair is going to cover it. And I'm going to roll this out. Make a worm and roll it out. Maybe I'll double that. So I make a little chunk. I'm going to cut it into a curve, like a half circle. And I'm going to cut some little triangles out of this. Okay, I've got some zigzags. I'm gonna make this her other shoulder, her other sleeve sticking out. There we go. So we've got two little shoulders, and now we're going to draw some patterns. So sometimes she has stripes, and sometimes she has even circles. So this side, I'll make some circles. Let me lay it down. I've got some circles on here. Then on the purple side, right here, I'll do some stripes. And maybe to this side, I'll do some wavy lines because she has all these different fabrics put together. On this sleeve, maybe I'll make it have some stripes. Okay, now she has stitches everywhere. Look at her elbows. Her clothes are even stitched together. Some stitches. So where this touches and this one touches, I'm going to have to have some stitches right here. Where this all stitches together. And over here, now her arms, they need to have some stitches on them because she's made up a fabric that's all sewn together. And we've got another stitch that is kind of curvy here. And it looks like she stitched around her wrists. So we'll go all around here. And let's see, we've also got a stitch right down the center of her body. And let's see, we have some around her neck. 
We can barely see her neck back there. And a few on the side of her face and one on her forehead. Okay, I think we've got that pretty, let's put a stitch on her hand. So now we've got her all filled up with stitches. And she looks like this. And now she's missing one thing. Major part of her is her red hair. So we're going to get the red. We've got a red packet and we're gonna use all the red up. Now the hair isn't as hard as it seems. What we're going to do is knead our red clay, get it nice and soft, our best part. And we're gonna finish her up. Okay, so I'm getting this nice and warm. I'm stretching it. Okay. Now I'm going to roll it into a ball. And I'm going to smash the ball. I'm gonna smash it as thin as I can. And I'm going to stretch it out a little. Now we want it kind of thin, so we're going to roll it with our Sharpie. And we want one end to be curved, to fit on her head. Okay, I'm going to make it into a circle, pretty much. Or a slight, you know, pretty much as close to a circle as you can stretch out, like a red pancake. Now, I'm going to put this on her head, like this, right above where those stitches are, and stick it down here and decide how long do I want her hair? This is so much hair. So what I think I'll do is I'll trim it. So now you become the hairdresser. So now I'm going to, or the hairstylist, I'm gonna style her hair by cutting some off. And I'll cut a little off this side. Wow, now she's got all that hair. I look in the front and I wanna be able to see her hands. So maybe I'll pull this back a little. And now to draw on it. We're gonna take this marker and we're going to put a line right down the middle of her hair. And you can take this line all the way down to the bottom. Maybe take it off the platform while you draw on it so that doesn't get sharpie all over it. Then we're going to make one line that goes around the edge of the front all the way down. Do the best you can. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect because she's a little rag doll all sewn together and she is not perfect. Okay, so we have the line down the middle and then one on the edges. Now, towards that part right in the middle, I want you to make like one, two, three, four, five, maybe six of these lines coming out of it. One, two, three, four. Start angling them down. And now, the first one, you go down and all the way to the bottom. The second one, down and to the bottom. And you just keep continuing that until you get to the very back like this. And then they go straight down. Let me turn this to the camera. We're gonna go from the top, down, and then we keep going down. So this is kind of a fun part, I think. And it's easy. Now you have all those lines. Now if you wanna add more lines, you can just add a few more, it's up to you. And now we're gonna look at her face and we're gonna reshape it again because we might have accidentally mushed it. So now I'm going to look at mine. I'm going to bring the chin more forward because it looks like I mush her as I was working on her. And I'm bringing her hands so that everybody can see that she's got her hands on her chin. And now the eyes, make sure they're level, this. 
and I've squished my nose once again. So I'm gonna start at the beginning and pinch it back out and take my pick and push it up and I'm gonna push it in on the sides and then I'm gonna give it the two nostrils. Now you can push and make holes for the nostrils or you can actually draw two black dots underneath. But make sure they're under and not over on the top part. So I'm bringing this together and when I'm done, we've got Sally. Now, if you want her to smile a little more, take the pick and turn up the corners in the corner of her mouth and you can put a little line in the middle if you want. And mine looks a little bit like this. Now, I can't wait to see how yours looks. So if you made one and you wanna show it to me, uh, post it on your socials and tag it with Art Classes for Kids. And you can also follow us on our Instagram, which is Art Classes for Kids. But most importantly, Sign up for um, our YouTube page and subscribe. Then you'll find out when we have all our new videos and you'll also get to go through our whole library of exciting projects that you can make at home. Until I see you next time. Well, even before I see you next time, make sure you give us a like if you like this video. And until I see you next time, keep making cool art.